Okay, so uh, this is week eight, AP2 lab, and week eight is about the blood vessels. So here is the first thing that we need to know. Um, again, this is not lecture, this is lab. I'm going to cover the point, the main points only. So if you have a cut section of an artery versus a vein, you will see that we have three layers. The innermost, which is this one right here, this is called the tunica. Tunica means layer. Tunica entema, entema, it's intimate to the blood. So this is the innermost. The middle layer, remember the M goes with the M. Middle muscle, middle muscle. I mentioned that before, and it is any hollow organ in the body. Same thing. The middle layer is always muscles. So the middle layer is here, this big chunk of muscles here. And the outermost is called tunica externa or adventitia, okay? This is for labeling, okay? This is the model right here, and you can see a model or a picture, I don't know. So we have to be prepared, models and pictures. So for the, the picture, this innermost right here, this is the tunica entoma. This big chunk, red, this is the media, which is muscles. And this is the externa, also called adventitia, okay? You need to notice something. You might see some white in between the layers. It doesn't count. We count only the three. Entima, media, externa, clear? So when you take the models, you will see some white sheets, stuff, don't worry about it. Just the three, okay? So this is for the picture and I'll go through the lab. Uh, through the models, I mean. Uh, pulse points, I think we did that last week, right? So it's just reviewing temporal, here is a facial, here is a carotid. Um, so temporal, facial, carotid, brachial, uh, this is the radial right here. This is the femoral or femoral, this is the popliteal. And this is the posterior tibial and dorsalis pedis. Uh, so most likely we will have a picture or something and label it and tell me what is this and what is that. Which point are we uh, pulsating or which point is the pulse? Uh, next part is uh, the different types of circulations. We have pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. Pulmonary circulation is between the heart and the lungs. Okay? Pay attention. I'll take. 15 minutes altogether, okay? So um, we have two circuits, pulmonary circuit and systemic circuit. Pulmonary circuit is between the heart and the lungs. Systemic is between the heart and everything else, the entire body, okay? In this part, it's not enough to label. You might see some critical thinking questions here because there is some tweaking, there are some um, deeper information so we can see some critical thinking questions here uh, so in this part what you have to know is the sequence of the blood moving through those labeling is number one it goes without saying you have to label everything in your list okay this is the main thing but from the critical thinking point of view number one we can see the sequence of blood so the first thing is this right here is the superior vena cava, up here, and this down here is the inferior vena cava. Uh, what's, what's the function of those? This can be a critical thinking question. What does it do? So the superior vena cava is to bring the deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body back to the heart, or back to the right atrium, okay? Inferior vena cava on the other hand, which is this lower part right here, what is the function? To bring the blood, bring deoxygenated blood, to be clear, deoxygenated blood from the lower part of the body back to the heart, to the right atrium to be specific. Okay for those? So now the deoxygenated blood is in the right atrium. From the right atrium, it will flow and go through the, uh, the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, still deoxygenated. This is the critical thinking part, still deoxygenated. It will go to the pulmonary trunk, still deoxygenated. And then to the right and left pulmonary arteries, still deoxygenated. Remember this, arteries, but deoxygenated. Most of the time the artery is oxygenated, isn't it? It's usually red, 
red is an artery right always remember this red is artery red vessel is artery except pulmonary and the fetal circulation as well we didn't do it yet but for adults when you see something red it's an artery right away except for the pulmonary clear so when you see the pulmonary you, you need to know like I'm, I'm pointing to blue vessel uh, it's pulmonary pulmonary what blue pulmonary pulmonary what artery. artery is that clear if I point to a pulmonary red vessel and it is pulmonary and you know it's going to the lung or coming from the lung and it's red what is it red pulmonary vessel what is it red vein red is vein is this point clear okay after that it will come back obviously it's going to the lung um this is right atrium right ventricle pulmonary trunk right and left pulmonary arteries to the right lung and the left lung here's the right trunk left lung and then it will come back through the pulmonary veins that is red back to the left ventricle uh, left atrium i'm sorry back to the left atrium from the left atrium to the bicuspid valve to the left ventricle from the left ventricle you have the following sequence through the aortic uh, semilunar valve to the ascending aorta transverse or pulmonary arch descending okay so ascending arch or transverse descending and then thoracic aorta and then abdominal aorta is that clear critical thinking questions it would be more on the on these blood vessels big blood vessels superior vena cava inferior vena cava uh, aorta example what is the big artery that takes the blood out the first one that takes the blood out of the left ventricle for example that would be the ascending aorta right what is the major blood vessel that takes the blood down to the lower half of the body take the blood to this will be uh, um, if, if it is for example it's in uh, ab uh, thorax thoracic aorta if it's in the abdomen abdominal aorta is this part clear okay so in this part you need to know the function and is it oxygenated or not so this is for the pulmonary circuit and systemic circuit If you look at this picture right here, this is superior vena cava. And down here would be the inferior vena cava, right? If you look at the superior vena cava, you will see right brachiocephalus. This is labeling. Anything else besides what I talked about, the major blood vessels, this is just labeling. So what is this? This is superior vena cava. If you look at the branches that's coming, uh, right brachiocephalic, left brachiocephalic, okay and by the way you need to know right from left it's not enough to say brachiocephalic how to know them it's right here this is the right side because this is the right atrium right superior vena cava going to the right atrium so this is the right side right brachiocephalic left brachiocephalic right brachiocephalic is going to divide into right subclavian right uh, internal jugular okay uh, same thing here, left, left brachiocephalic vein, um, left internal jug jugular, and left subclavian. This is for the arteries, and this is what we, we need to know, okay? Besides what I mentioned before, which is function. What does it do? On the other hand, if you look at this, this is the ascending aorta, this is the aortic arch, and then descending aorta. It's important to notice the blood vessels here. In this one, this one exception, the right side is different than the left side. And the right side only, you have this trunk. Can we see this long trunk right here? This is called the brachiocephalic trunk. Sometimes they call it brachiocephalic artery. This is in the right side only. We don't have trunk in the left side. Okay? This is something unique. This is going to divide into right common carotid 
and right subclavian. On the left side, no trunk. So the left common carotid and left subclavian, they come directly from the aortic arch. There is no trunk before that. Clear? So the two on the side are different than the two on the left. The two, right common carotid, right subclavian, come from brachiocephalic trunk. The left, they come from the aortic arch. Um, here again, this is the pulmonary trunk, and this is right and left pulmonary arteries, and these, this is one right and one left. Look at the, at the, at the veins, two right and two left, okay? Next is coronary arteries. We only need to know right and left uh, coronary arteries. Okay, this is the right coronary artery right here that's going to feed the right side of the heart. I'm saying roughly, it's not exactly like that, but this is not physiology. Okay, good enough to know what are these. This is the left coronary artery. What's the function? Feeding blood, feeding oxygenated blood to the heart. That's it. And they come from the very, very beginning of the ascending aorta. So this is for the coronary arteries. Um, portal system. This can be a critical thinking question. What is the portal system? The portal system is a special system that takes the blood from the digestive tract it takes the blood with the absorbed nutrients from the digestive tract and bring it to the liver and end there. This is unique. Always, when you say veins, you, you're saying that the blood is collecting and going back to the heart, isn't it? What's the final destination of any vein? Going back to the heart, isn't it? Arteries going out of the heart, veins going back to the, going back to the heart, isn't it? To the right atrium, not this. This have nothing to do with the heart. Even though it's called vein, but it have nothing to do with the heart. Just bring the blood with the absorbed nutrients and it will collect it all together and it will take it to the liver and end. That's it. When it's handed it to the liver, it will end. Liver will take care of it. And then the blood will leave back to the right and left pulmonary um, hepatic veins, back to the inferior vena cava. Okay, so in this part, we need to label it. What is this? Hepatic portal vein. Critical thinking question, what does it do? Bring blood with absorbed nutrients from the digestive tract to the liver and end there. The liver will take it from there will handle it, and through the hepatic veins, it will, it will send it to the inferior vena cava. It's ultimately going back to the heart, but not through this hepatic portal system. So you see this vein, blue, going towards, um, it's usually purple because it's mixed blood. If it's going back to the, to the liver, that will be the hepatic portal system or hepatic portal vein. Okay, good enough to know in this part. Uh, next is the fetal circulation. Fetal circulation, simply, we know that the fetus does not breathe, right? The lungs are not inflated yet. The lungs are not working yet. So obviously the fetus is going to take the blood from the mom, right? Through this umbilical cord. Inside the umbilical cord, you will see blue and red vessels, okay? The red, are the, are the umbilical veins. This is the second time, isn't it? I want this to stick in your mind, in your brain. You have to remember this. Always say to yourself this. All arteries in the body are red. All veins in the body are blue, except two exceptions, pulmonary and fetal. Clear? Always say this, pulmonary and fetal exception. So if this is the exam, pulmonary and fetal is an exception. Pulmonary and fetal is an exception. That's it. Other than that, any red is artery, any blue is vein. Clear enough? Okay. 
This is an exception. So here is the red is vein. The red is vein for the second time. Like the, the, the red pulmonary is also vein. Clear. I'm emphasizing this point because always mistakes happen from this. So always remember it like this. All arteries in the body are red. All veins in the body are blue except pulmonary and fetal. It's the opposite. Okay? So in this one here, the red will be the pulmonary veins. It's bringing... Why did you call it vein if it is red? Because it's all about the direction of the blood. Is it going to the heart of the fetus? I will call it a vein, irrespective of oxygenated or not. Okay? So this is bringing the oxygenated blood to the umbilical vein, which is red, and it will go to the heart of the baby. On the other hand, in the baby, you will see the same circulation like ours, but you will see here, going down here, this is the descending aorta. It will end up splitting into right common iliac, left common iliac, which will split into external iliac, in, internal iliac, right external internal, same thing on the left. But here is the point I'm trying to make. Pulmonary arteries are going to come from the internal iliac artery temporarily during fetal time only okay Be this is where we have the fetal circulation and then the blue inside the umbilical cord is going to be um, the umbilical arteries is that okay any questions in this part we're fine with this okay um, next part is just labeling Uh, this is the brachiocephalic trunk. This is the right subclavian. This is the right common carotid. External carotid. Internal carotid. And this is facial artery. Facial artery is right here, going to the face. Do you remember when we talked about the pulse points? It's right here. Okay. And this is superficial temporal. Uh, superficial temporal, the carotid, the facial, all of this was in the pulse points. So you should know what it is, but this is just labeling. Okay, next part, subclavian. This is a very easy part if you know where the name came from. And let me say it this way. This is your clavicle, isn't it? Yeah. Under the clavicle is subclavian. The artery here is very simple. It's all about the compartment. Do we know that this is a clavicle? We know this is the axilla. We know this is the brachium, which is the arm. We know this is your radius and this is your ulna, right? From the bone. So the artery will go like this. This is the easiest thing. Under the clavicle, subclavian. Sub means under, isn't it? Subclavian. And then it go to the axilla. What do you want to call it? Axillary. And then it go to the brachium. Brachial. And then it go to the radius. Radial. And then it go to the, ul to the ulna. Ulnar. Okay? Subclavian. It will become axillary, it will become brachial, and the brachial will split into radial and ulnar. Okay? And the radial is the one that we can pulsate, if you remember the pulse points. So, if you look at this picture here, this is subclavian. In the axilla, it's axillary. Right here in the brachium, it's called the brachial. And then it will split into radial and ulnar. Do you know where is your radius and ulnar? Which one is stored the thumb? The radius or the ulna? Huh? Radius. radius. This is how to know these arteries from each other. Toward the thumb is your radius. Radial artery. So these are these arteries. How about the lower limb? The abdominal aorta is going to end up splitting into right and left common, uh, common iliac arteries. This is the right one, right here. Right common iliac. Same thing as the upper limb. Very easy. Very easy. Look at this. You call this alia? Aliac region, right? This is called aliac region. This is called the femur, isn't it? This is the radius. This is your uh, tibia. And this is your pedula, isn't it? Tibia and pedula. Same names. Just like the upper limb. Very simple. Here, common alia, external, internal. External will become what? become femoral. What is this fossa here? 
Does anybody remember? Popliteal. Popliteal? Yes. So here the right here, this is area creation, common area. External, internal. Internal is just the set, internal, just call it internal. And then external will continue. What do you call it here? Femoral. What do you call it here? Popliteal. What do you call it here? Tibia. What do you call it here? Fibular. It's just the name of the bone. Okay? Plus the and the tibia, there is anterior and posterior tibia. Okay? Is that clear? So go with it here. This is the descending abdominal aorta. Right common iliac, internal and external. External will become femoral, popliteal, tibial, anterior tibial, posterior tibial, and the fibular, which is this one in the other side here, fibular. And then remember that posterior tibial is one of the pulse points, and it will, at the end, the anterior tibial will become dorsalis pedis. Do you remember this in the pulse points? So this is labeling only. This is from the arterial side. From the venous side, right side you have right brachiocephalic vein, left side you have left brachiocephalic vein. Are we following? Did you notice something here? Did you notice that in the arteries only? The right side have a brachiocephalic trunk. The left side does not have it. Did you notice this? The right side, you have a brachiocephalic trunk that gives right common carotid and right subclavian. And the left side, you don't have it. You have left common carotid and left subclavian coming directly from the aorta, isn't it? So in the artery, the right side is different than the left side. This is not the case in the veins. The veins are the same. Right and left, exactly the same. So on the right side, we have, this is the right brachius. Everything that I'm saying is the same in the left. Okay, no difference. Right brachiocephalic, right subclavian, and uh, internal jugular. Here we will have the external jugular as well. What's the difference between internal jugular and external jugular? Internal to what and external to what? What is this muscle here? Does anybody remember this muscle? The muscle. Sterno, sternocleidomastoid. Do you remember this muscle? So the vein that's inside, internal, is internal jugular. The muscle that's external to the muscle is external jugular. This is where the name came from. Okay? This is uh, the facial vein will be here. Facial vein. Um, and the venous side, there is a difference here than the arteries. What did you call the artery that was here? Subclavian. Subclavian artery, subclavian vein. Same thing. What did you call the artery here? Axillary. Axillary artery, axillary vein. So far, no difference. What did you call it here? Brachial. Brachial artery, brachial vein, but I have two additional veins. This is the difference. I have two additional veins. Okay? This one right here is called cephalic, and this one is called basilic. This is the difference. Other than that, if you go down, you will see the, brach the brachial uh, will, will end up giving you the right and left, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry, ulnar and radial. And this, the radial is stored your thumb and the ulnar. And there is a vein, a very prominent vein right here that's called median cubital vein. Uh, yes, this vein has medical significance. This is the most common vein that they use to draw blood. Did you see it on your... Uh, elbow before. If you look here, you will see a very prominent vein going like this, or like this, going obliquely like this. It's very prominent. It's easy to take blood from. So this one is called medial cubital vein, and this is a vein that's connecting the cephalic from one side and the basilic from the other side. So here again, here, subclavian artery, subclavian vein. It's the same. No difference. Here, Axillary artery, axillary vein, no difference. Here, brachial artery, brachial vein, this is a difference. I have cephalic and basilic, extras. They connect through MCV. That's the only difference. Other than that, radial and ulnar. Clear? Yeah. So, oh, never mind. You have a question? No, I, I'm not looking at my word list, though. But, uh, 
I'm, I'm covering all the structures as we go and you can take a look at it. If there's something that uh, we didn't mention, right. we can go through it. Or what if we're mentioning too much? Oh, no, this is the list. I didn't, uh, this is all mentioned here. These are the arteries that you need to know. Uh, pulmonary trunk. Um, we, I will go through it and tell me if I, if I missed something, okay? I didn't add anything. Uh, so here is the pulmonary trunk dividing into pulmonary, right and left pulmonary. We did this. Uh, ascending aorta, aortic arch, descending aorta, thoracic and abdominal. We did the right coronary and left coronary, right? And then we have uh, the common carotid, um, vertebral artery, I didn't mention this. I will show you. Vertebral artery. Facial artery, we did talk about it. Brachiocephalic trunk is right here. Subclavian, axillary, brachial, ulnar, radial. We, we went through all of this, right? The only thing that, that I missed is the vertebral. Uh, then in the, uh, in, the, in the lower limb, you go through common iliac. We did it. Internal, external, femoral, popliteal, anterior tibial, posterior tibial. Dorsalis pedis. Dorsalis pedis. Uh, internal iliac. Uh, renal arteries, I didn't mention that and uh, celiac trunk, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. Okay, so here is one, two, three, four, and the femoral. This is, this is what I didn't do. So let me go through it again. Just those, not, not everything. Do you know the parts where there's vertebral? Yes, I'm, I'm just going to do the parts that, we, that I missed, okay? So look at this. Do you see this artery right here? Oh, in the spine. In the spines, do you see this? This is the vertebral artery, which is coming from the subclavian, okay? Then we have another three. Uh, okay, I didn't mention it because it's not in these pictures. The renal would be in the kidney, right? The renal is going to the kidney. It's not in these pictures. Uh, but generally speaking, The renal is going to the kidney. I will show you um, the models. Renal go to the kidney, and then three arteries come from the anterior aspect of the aorta. Okay, celiac trunk, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. All right, so this is for, for the pictures. Uh, we didn't see the last three only, which is celiac trunk, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. Uh, we will see a model for this.